Hello, Scott here for another KSP Shorty. This time I'm looking directly at the Thermo Turbo Jets from the Interstellar mod. Now this isn't my canon game where I've been building stuff. This is just a test because I wanted to get a good baseline comparison of thrust versus IS ISP with each one of the reactors that are available in the Interstellar mod. So for example, this is the nuclear reactor, the very first one you get. However, it is fully upgraded because again, this is part of my sandbox game. So right now I'm using a stock intake from the B9 pack. Uh, it's taking in standard carbon atmosphere and it's basically running fuelless because when you upgrade the turbojets they have that option. So the idea is I want to see if I can make SSTOs out of these and how well they perform as well as get some good you know comparisons of thrust versus ISP. Now this one on atmosphere is interesting because again the thrust and the ISP vary based on what uh, your altitude is in the atmosphere. So that's why if you're using you know tools like um, KSP Engineer, uh, they don't actually show you anything in the hangar when it comes to thrust versus ISP because it doesn't it changes. And these are some good values I thought to have going forward. Now as you can see here, we're uh, getting close to you know starting to lose atmosphere, so we're, our, our thrust in, is going down, and so is our ISP a little bit, which is fine. I mean ultimately that's expected. Now these also have the option of switching to fuel mode and the baseline I'm using is just your standard liquid fuel oxidizer that you use in most rockets. And uh, when I hit the button to toggle propellant here, it's going to go to LFO, which stands for liquid fuel oxidizer. As you can see then the ISP becomes solid and so does the thrust. And, uh, the thrust is about 32 kilonewtons and as you can see that is not enough to push this craft out into space. It starts to come down. So that's fine. That makes it an okay craft if you don't need to leave orbit. Now this is the fission reactor that we have that uses the drillium and tritium uh, combination. You want to stick with that fuel mode for this reactor because that's the one that ultimately generates the most heat. The other uh, combinations with helium-3 and beryllium mix just generate charged particles which can't be used by the thermo turbo jets for thrust. So as you can see the thrust on this one is significantly better. It's almost double what the other one was which is great. It's a higher class of engine. We kind of want that. And uh, as we're getting up in the atmosphere, it climbs pretty well. As you can see, the intake uh, air is going down. It's going to have to switch over. We'll switch over to liquid fuel here in just a minute. As you can see, we got up to about 20 clicks before we had to, which was also better. Be that's also due to the higher speed that it was traveling at. And then we're switched to LFO here, and now you can see it's steady at 73 kilonewtons, but the ISP is almost over 3,000. And that's pretty awesome fuel economy if you ask me. Um, so that's good. Now this will probably have enough thrust to wait to keep going as you can see it's still climbing. Um, I'm having a little trouble fighting atmosphere right now because I haven't got any RCS on this craft. It's all being done with the torque in the uh, pro body. But ultimately, you know, once we get past the atmosphere it gets out there. Has no trouble whatsoever getting into orbit with a lot of fuel to finish its circularization. So this is a very viable configuration of this particular probe craft if you were looking for an SSTO probe. And at least if you're going to stick to Kerbin and or Leith because they have the two uh, atmospheres are very similar. Now the other thing I want to mention here as well is if you notice there's another resource up there besides intake air, there's intake atmo or intake atmosphere. Those are both collected by the nozzle at the front of the plane, the air intake. Stock ones will do the same. And that means you can collect the atmospheres of other planets that aren't necessarily Kerbin or Lathe, like Duna, Eve, and I think even Jewel. You can collect the atmospheres and you can run these turbojets fuelless on those in those atmospheres as well. So that worked just fine as an SSTO. Now this one is that new fission reactor that came with the most recent patch. Uh, uses a uranium nitride fuel. Uh, the only configuration that I think it can use for now. And on paper the numbers are almost identical to the previous fission reactor. The, um, the ISP is lower but the thrust is approximately the same. Now in Atmo that doesn't make any difference because Atmo is almost a free resource. However when we get this sucker up into the later stages of atmosphere where we no longer can take advantage of the air intakes, we run into a slightly different concern. As you can see here we're running slowly out of intake air and as soon as I switch it over to liquid fuel mode you'll see exactly what I mean. 
This information would have been handy for me when I was building my other push vehicle because ultimately it was trying to circularize the moon in my last episode but yet ran out of gas and ended up having to be rescued by my keythane hauler. But this is part of the reason why I decided to do this test and share it with you guys was because I needed a good baseline to really be able to use these. So now I'm switching it over to liquid fuel now. As you can see, the AA thrust is about the same, but the ISP is, significant, is significantly less. It's only about 800 and some. That's about that's still better than a nuclear engine, like from the vanilla Kerbal program, in terms of thrust and ISP. But compared to the other one, it's a gas guzzler. Compared to the fission system from before, as you can see, the fuel is just getting torqued down by comparison. That's okay too. I mean, ultimately, this is what this test is for. But this one will ultimately have enough thrust, ISP, and delta V to finish the circularization and get into space. So this vehicle could still be useful for certain applications. However, if it's its biggest probably pro is that the uranium nitrate is probably easier to get than the other compounds from the other one. So if you had to refill it, this one might be might be something you'd want to consider. Anywho. We're just going to finish the circularization burn here to make sure that it works. Uh, it's going to get pretty close right down to the wire in terms of gas here. Exactly. But it does end up doing it. I don't have a lot left over, but it does end up working. Now, let's play with some antimatter. This is the antimatter reactor, and as you can see, as soon as I hit the gas, this thing just shot like a bullet straight up. I could not believe the thrust that this thing generated. And the ISP. The IMP, they're both insane. Now, yes, I had to do a little bit of save file editing just to make sure I had the antimatter to test with. Like, we were getting entry effects leaving the planet I was going up so fast. Look at my uh, apoapsis. Apoapsis height. That's just nuts. And I hardly used any fuel or any part um, antimatter particles. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, okay. Well, I gotta get a better test for this one because obviously that qualifies as an SSTO if I've ever seen one. <laughs> that was awesome. So again, I... Minor, I use a minor misuse of my programming powers to uh, modify the save file here, and we're going to try this out on another body just to kind of put this baby to bed and just see exactly how awesome it is. So, we're on E, or we're at least descending upon into the atmosphere, as you can see here. I just edited my save file a little bit so that I was there. So, yes, this is technically a cheat, but this is a cheat for science! So, anyway, I'm going... My wanted to see how well this thing would perform in EVE, and yes, I can actually show you guys how ter thermo turbojets work just fine, fuelless on EVE, which is like got the thickest atmosphere, I believe, of all of them, if you exclude Jewel, and um, we can land on this body. So we can land here and try to take off and see if I can get an SSTO off of EVE. That would be amazing. I don't know if anyone's ever done that before. Now, yes, we're using a mod, and yes, we're using I did cheat a little just to get myself some antimatter and get myself to EVE so I could make this test, but ultimately these parts are there and they can be built and or collected in the Interstellar mod. So I'm going to end up just going down here. EVE is such a thick atmosphere that, uh, you know, it it's like flying through soup. Uh, you know, it, even pointing your nose down and trying to gain speed that way will slow you down a little bit in places. It's actually kind of funny. It took me a little bit getting used to it. And I didn't want to land in the ocean, so I had to fly, fly over to the next uh, land body that I could land on. And uh, from there, I will uh, co come to a complete stop and take off again, just to see if we can do it. And, yeah, like, I could not believe it. I was, like, just giggling the whole time I when I seen this thing flying. And ultimately, there's one other thing I should mention, too, about these thermal turbojets, especially if you're in atmospheres on other planets. They don't immediately shut off when you c kill the throttle. You will hit the throttle and then they'll wind down. And this is true on any reactor. So you got to be kind of careful when you're playing with your thrust on these because you can't immediately kill your thrust like you can with any other engine. So it takes a little bit more finesse to actually be precise with it. But ultimately it's not that tough to fly with. And I think anyone could do it. So we're coming in again here. And one thing I noticed and I was just kind of briefly mentioned this earlier was my surface speed I was pointing myself down to try to get closer to the ground because this thing was gliding forever like this whole approach took me a good 20 minutes or so just because the atmosphere was so thick and I've got this at 4x speed mind you so you guys uh, 
don't have to sit through that painful landing. But ultimately, yeah, like even going down, like I pointed out here, you can see me slowing down with my nose pointed down, which usually doesn't happen on curb, and I thought that was kind of funny, so I figured I'd point it out. So we're coming down now, you can start to see the texture of the surface, so I get a better idea of how high I am. And keep in mind, this is 4X, so it looks like I'm coming in a lot hotter than I was. And we just uh, lift in the wings to try to bleed off some energy, and finally we touch down and slap on the brakes, and yeah, we're there. We touch down, perfect. While I'm here, I'm just going to use the little atmosphere doohickey that comes with the mod <laughs> to see what the atmosphere is, and that's fine. Now let's take off and see if we can get off this planet. And this, I'm just like, oh, I just hit the gas and floored it, and this vehicle just started to spaz out in atmosphere. Like, it was shimmying, it was hard to steer, so I turned down the throttle until I got it under control, and then it flew just fine, and then I slowly started to accelerate again. Maybe just, you know, slamming the gas with a part with an antimatter drive is just, just not good for it. Like, it was physics freaking out. So, keep that in mind. So now we're getting up there, we're getting close to uh, thing. We're starting to get exit effects. I have no doubt at this point that this SSTO could do it. I'm like bouncing in my seat going, yes, yes, we can do this. This totally changes the way that you could look at EVE now. You can actually pull stuff off the surface. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to make it and pop. Oh, damn, the heat. I did not notice in time that my engine was accumulating heat on the way out and it overheated and popped. And I was just like, no! <laughs> but ultimately, it's just a test for science. So proving that, yes, ultimately this thing could have taken off off of EVE if I had been paying more attention. But anyways, I got the trials done. I was happy, and I just wanted to get that out to you guys because I thought that was awesome. See you around. This is Scott signing off.